there. We had a screen up at the start saying that you could put your questions into the chat, but I do know some of you don't have the chat. So if you would like to raise your hand uh, at, on the question and answer session, uh, the chairs will get to you as well. So that would be great for questions. Well, I only have one role this morning. It's a very important one is to introduce our two amazing chairs who've taken the time out of their very busy schedules to come on board today. So uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Michelle Markin and Gareth Harvey. Michelle is the former Belfast Learning City Chair and also a former teacher. Although you ever a former teacher, Michelle, I don't I think you're always yeah, a teacher, aren't you? And Gareth is chair of Derry and Straban Learning City and works for All Street as their global learning advisor. Uh, well, without further ado, uh, Gareth, I'm going to hand over to you. Uh, yeah. Take it away. Thank you, Michelle. Um, good evening, afternoon, morning, everyone. Uh, it's a great honour for me to, to come and talk at this um, meeting today and to really speak about the Irish Network of Learning Cities. Uh, so the Irish Network of Learning Cities was originally uh, formed in November 2018 and was following a coming together in Cork uh, for a Learning City con and con Conversations event. Um, as Michelle mentioned, the network uh, includes cities of Cork, Limerick, Belfast and Dublin and um, the Derry and Strabane district as well. And all five of those are members of the UNESCO Global Network of Learning Cities. Um, today we're going to talk about um, a lot of the great work that's been done throughout those regions and also we're going about, about to play a video from our Lord Mayors and Mayors and in 2019 um, the Mayors of those cities um, formally signed an agreement to commit each city to work together and provide mutual support to help deliver um, on the vision of a learning city for all citizens. This memorandum of understanding was for an initial three year period and it, it highlighted a shared de um, dedication to strengthening friendly relations and enhanced cooperation between the peoples of the cities and city regions and to really carry out learning city exchanges focusing on the principles of the UNESCO Global Network of Learning Cities. In keeping with this mission, um, the network members are committed to sharing and learning um, and uh, talking about best practices and offering support to each other on issues of common interest to their learning cities. This is truly a great supportive network. I know I've personally grown in my role as a chair from learning from all the other uh, coordinators, members, and indeed the chairs across the other um, cities and other regions. As a network of cities, we work together to promote lifelong learning, highlight learning opportunities across the cities and the city regions, and of course, celebrate the achievements of our learners. We share a belief that lifelong learning could be, can be used to um, create more equitable and inclusive society, a more sustainable and healthy society, and create inclusive opportunities for decent work and entrepreneurship. And um, I would like to now play our first video, and we're going to hear today from a number of videos, but a number of speakers um, throughout those five um, cities. The first video will be from our Lord Mayors and Mayor of the Irish Network of Learning Cities. So, Eamor, if you'd like to play the first video. As a network of learning cities, we work together to celebrate how learning can transform people's lives for the better. Since 2019, we have shared our ideas, experience and best practice in developing as learning cities, and we have built very positive relationships across our cities and regions. Together, we want to ensure that everyone reaches their full potential, has a decent job and standard of living, has good health and well-being, and that we live in a safe, vibrant, inclusive society. Learning is central to achieving these outcomes. Through days like today, we celebrate how learning empowers people, boosts confidence, connects people from all backgrounds, building stronger, healthier communities. As a network of learning cities, we want to demonstrate the power of celebrating learning and the knowledge that learning can happen anywhere, not only within the walls of a classroom. Informal learning plays a critical role in engaging those individuals furthest away from the education and employment market, providing free learning opportunities within local neighbourhood and communities can be the many instances the first step for those individuals who previously turned away from all types of learning. Those informal pathways provide an alternative route into formal education for a lot of people. We look forward to working on more collaborations with our Learning City colleagues across this island, not only to support learners, but to help create a culture of lifelong learning across the island. Education has always been highly valued on the island of Ireland. 
acting as a central plank in the economic, social and cultural development of our society. In 2019, the learning cities of Dublin, Cork, Limerick, Belfast and Derry and Strabane region formally signed an agreement to commit each city to work together and provide mutual support to help deliver on the vision of a learning city for all citizens. As learning city regions, we want to encourage and promote lifelong learning to all our citizens across all age groups and sectors throughout the region. Our memorandum of understanding that we re-signed this year is an important agreement to commit each city to work together and provide mutual support to help deliver on the vision of a learning city for all citizens. We look forward to our fruitful collaborations and we commit to actively supporting its work over the next five years. Whether you are learning to develop skills or to grow your career, our events are learning opportunities, celebrate lifelong learning and can have a real impact on both your professional and personal development. Since 2002, Cork City has seen the positive results of bringing a sustained commitment to lifelong learning in our city. The growth of our Lifelong Learning Festival over the past 18 years has shown us that regardless of the challenges faced by individuals or communities, a positive attitude to lifelong learning enables people to respond to change. Our approach includes a commitment to deliver on the UN Sustainable Development Goals by making our cities inclusive, green and healthy places to live, learn and work. We continue to use our network to improve our collective responses to the challenges cities now face. From climate change to conflict, we know that we can do better together. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Well, um, it's my very pleasant uh, to take over as chair from Gareth for a few moments. Um, I hope everybody can hear me. Uh, we've just had a wonderful video um, recording the determination of all of the Learning Cities Network to forge ahead the keywords, the economic, social and personal development of all of the citizens throughout their lifetimes, um, a vibrant, inclusive, healthier city in each case. It's, it's a wonderful determination that cities are taking this on when perhaps at a global level um, in the politicians uh, arena, it's not quite happening the same way. So a very valuable contribution from our Lord Mayors and our Mayors. And now it's my privilege to introduce our first speaker from Cork Learning City, and that is Norma Brown, who is the Learning Neighbourhood Coordinator for Cork Learning City. She's going to talk about Cork's learning neighbourhoods and the social, the sustainable development goals that uh, Cork has set out for itself in line with their link with Groningen in the Netherlands and a series of sustainable development goals which they have set for themselves during their learning festival. So we're going to listen to Norma now. Welcome, Norma. Yeah, uh, thank you, Michelle, and uh, th thank you to everyone for having me here today. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening as well. So, um, yeah, I'm, as you said, Norma Brown, and I coordinate the Cork Learning Neighbourhoods Programme. And um, today I'm just going to give an overview of the South Parish Sustainable Practices Trail, which is an, an activity that we ran during this year's Cork um, Lifelong Learning Festival. So, um, Emer, if you'd like to go to the next slide, if that would be OK, thank you. So just to give you all a brief um, overview of the Cork Learning Neighbourhoods Programme, um, as you may know, Cork was awarded the UNESCO Learning City Award in 2015. And as a result of that, the Learning Neighbourhoods Initiative was developed. And we currently have six learning neighbourhoods, all neighbourhoods who face educational disadvantage. Um, and all of these um, neighbourhoods come together to um, promote lifelong learning. So if you want to go to the next slide again, Emer, thank you. So what is a learning neighbourhood? A learning neighbourhood is an area that has an ongoing commitment to learning, providing and celebrating inclusive and diverse learning opportunities for the whole community through partnership and collaboration. 
So each of our communities has their own coordination group, which work together. There's representatives from local businesses, local schools and local residents who work together to create um, different learning opportunities. So next slide. Thanks, Seymour. So the main goal, as I said, is to create a positive learning, lifelong learning culture for all ages. So you can move to the next slide again. Thanks, Seymour. So this year, as part of the festival, um, we had a group from Nordapur School who were on Erasmus with our local um, Further Education College. And this group actually partners with us each year to um, submit an event for the Lifelong Learning Festival. So this year, the project goal for the group was around sustainable development goal number 11, which is making cities more and more sustainable. And as a result of this, the local coordination group in South Parish decided to run a sustainable practices trail to really, um, I suppose, to support the group in their in their learning goals. So this this um, this tour took place during the learning festival and was was hosted by um, Maria Young, who's our green spaces coordinator in Cork. And for the tour, we visited a number of um, different locations. So if you want to move to the next slide, Emer. Thanks. So first of all, we went to the Beehive, which is on the local on the roof of the local school, and we learned about the um, the making of honey and beekeeping. So next slide, please, Emer. Then we visited the local florist, Cork Flower Studio, who have turned their business into a plastic free business. Um, all of their arrangements are plastic free and they do all of their deliveries by cargo bike. And next slide, please, Emer. And then we visited Park Owen Community Garden. So Park Owen Community Garden um, is a community gardening space and um, the uh, Maria Young um, spoke to us about a variety of different um, I suppose activities that are happening in the garden. So um, this um, this trail has been run on a number of occasions since then, and I think it was a great example of kind of inter uh, intergenerational learning, international um, learning and um, interagency learning as well. And I think it, it could be a good example of something that could be run across various neighbourhoods. So uh, with that, um, I think I, I'm my time is up. So um, so thank you for listening and thank you for having me again today. Thanks. Thanks so much, Norma. Um, it's really great to hear, and you know that, that is certainly one of the things about you know holding a learning festival. It it really shines a spotlight on some of the great things that are happening throughout the year, and giving people an opportunity to see what's happening in the region, in the cities, and uh, hopefully you know pique their interest, and uh, not just during the festival, but throughout the rest of the year as well. So really appreciate Norma and um, some some great um, great stuff happening there. Um, I'm now going to introduce our our next uh, two speakers. Now we've got. Um, Jared Mullen and Leanne Mulhern from Action Ability Project in Belfast, and they're going to speak about um, the Speak Out event, which they've organised each year as part of the Belfast Festival of Learning. So, uh, Leanne and Jared, over to you. Good morning. Morning. Hi, hey, thank you, Gareth. Hi, hey, we just want to give you a wee chat just in regards to what the you know being involved in the Belfast. Um, uh, Festival of Learning means to us with Actionability. So Actionability um, works under the umbrella of the Upper Springfield Development Trust. Um, we're a community organisation and um, we're basically work with people with disabilities um, to get them out using their own services on their doorstep, social opportunity, knowing their rights. Um, myself and Jared, so I'm the team leader with advocacy, I'm befriending and Jared, one of our peer advocates um, who is a member within our speak out group. So each year, our speak out group would um, participate in the Festival of Learning, delivering a speak out conference or a discussion where we would um, give our experiences of people with disabilities and um, the prejudice, I suppose, or the discrimination that we've been faced with and how we've dealt with them or overcome them. Um, our guys then will give um, a wee bit of an information just as in what experiences they have experienced through life. And then through that, um, we would then ask or we would then give our empower um, participants um, information as into what they can do about it or where to get the advice. Um, what we find every year when we do participate, a lot of the guys that come to us are faced with a lot of barriers um, in understanding learning and learning they've been shut off to. A lot of the guys we're also faced with um, may have had issues with learning. Um, which may have been negative towards them. And so when they come to us and we can kind of direct them in the right direction 
or um, make it more inclusive for them to understand that they have control or that they can empower their lives. So I'm just going to give it over to Jared just to give his wee bit of information. Jared hosts um, the event and it is our event is given um, is hosted by people with disabilities for people with disabilities or those who work with people with disabilities. Hi, good morning. My name is Jared Mullen. I'm a part of the speaker group from Action Ability Belfast. Our group has been participating in the festival since its beginning. Sorry. As a person with disability who's blind and deaf and has a short term memory loss and affects affects my my disability through the education system in their, in early early days and as an old with disability I've been met with many barriers which I've had to overcome. This is why part of taking being part of the festival of learning is so important to me to bring awareness of groups and body, bodies and of education and learning with about disabilities and its challenges. As a peer advocate who through the festival such as this gets the opportunity to make people to meet meet with people with disabilities and aware and make them aware that they have rights and power to achieve their goals through learning and taking control of their own lives. Belfast is an ever changing and growing city and addressing the many challenges which people with disabilities face. With a broad stroke, we have learned so much, but we are still to learn more to learn in moving forward in making the city the city more tolerant and more disabled friendly. Through the Festival of Learning and Accessibility, the speaker group will from today on work today with overcoming prejudice and discrimination. Thank you for allowing me to take part. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Leanne and Jared. Um, I think that actionability represents the true face of what we're trying to do, which is to be inclusive and to know that we are all one. So thank you both for taking the time and making the effort to be with us this morning. It's wonderful. Um, I, I've now got the pleasure of being able to welcome our next uh, video and speaker from Derry Straban. Um, you'll hear from Ursh Ursula Doherty, who is um, the coordinator for um, the Strabans Lifelong Learning Festival um, in April 2022. Um, and she's the first face, it's the first face-to-face -face festival since becoming a UNESCO learning city. I think it's important to note here that um, what we're, we're commenting on is the importance of existing rural communities that they are insured, uh, their, their inclusion is insured in uh, learning events festivals. So we, we'll hear now, uh, see and watch the video now from Derry Straban. Thank you. Hello everybody, my name is Amanda Cray. I am the Sales and Recruitment Manager with Craft Training. Um, today we are embracing the Lifelong Learning Festival. Hi, I'm Emmett. Uh, I'm here today from Ulster University as part of the Lifelong Learning Festival. Really delighted to see so many people here and I'm delighted to be part of this festival today. Building on the legacy of the Learning City week that we brought to Strabane for the first time ever, we wish to build on that legacy now and roll this out through the summer period. College as part of the Learning City activity today. We are doing some colour creations and trying to see if we can create a rainbow in the tube and make a pH scale. Hello, my name is Aaron McDevitt. Um, I'm a lecturer at Northwest Regional College and I'm doing uh, a cookery demonstration today. Hi, I'm Gareth Harvey. I'm the chair of the Learning City Network. We've had a terrific uh, turnout with lots of events, not only here in Straban, but throughout the, the Derry and Straban region and Derry City, as far as Castle Derg as well. 
We've had great turnout at our um, in-person events. We've had road shows in the foil site. We've had um, online events as well, learning about mental health, cyber safety. Uh, it's great that we had such a great turnout. Um, we're, we're hoping to communicate more and more events, um, what was done this week and also uh, what's coming up in the future as part of lifelong learning. So thanks to everyone for taking a part and also thanks to all the volunteers spending their time this, this week. Hello, my name is Michelle Murphy. I am the Learning City and Region Coordinator for Darien Strabane and Learning City. I just want to say thanks to all our contributors, all our participants, but especially those people provided all their expertise, their joy, their experience right across the five days of the festival. We can't do it without you. We can't do it with people like you that want to give your time and kind and free. So we want to say a really special thanks for that. We also had such a diverse activities, events right across the week. We had acting up in Ulster University. We had road shows with an NWRC or Stan and Straban Community Project to do this wonderful background behind us. Just amazing. And the importance of this festival is that it's not only just about dairy, it's about dairy and Straban and all the rural regions as well. So thank you so much, everybody. I can't name all of you. You all know who you are. Thanks again and maybe next year. Thank you. Um, you know, as, as chair of the Darien Straban region um, learning network, it's 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 great to see videos like that. First, I need to apologise for everyone after hearing myself speaking video. I feel like I need to apologise to anyone I ever spoke to there. But uh, it's as I mentioned before, it's great to really shine a spotlight. You know, you've seen Ursula there about the Straban Community Project, and they do terrific um, work in the Straban area and wider rural area as well. And during the festival, it was they had a great opportunity to really um, get people involved in the work that they do there. Um, they do that each week, year in and year out, um, and the festival really shined a spotlight on that. And we had a great afternoon, um, nearly full day down there, seeing the great work they do, whether it was getting people out to learn how to um, grow certain plants, certain vegetables, but also the wonderful thing that they do within the community and that community, it's the Straban Community Project. So terrific to, to see that, um, uh, that, that video there about uh, what happened during the Darien Straban Learning Festival. Um, our next, um, <clears throat> excuse me, our next video uh, we're going to introduce is from Claire Campbell from the adult liturgy, uh, adult liturgy organizer for the city of Dublin. Um, this is from the Ballymun Adult Read and Write Scheme and it's a provider of literacy and basic education programs. They offer literacy tuition and second chance education opportunities for adults who would like to improve the literacy skills reading, writing, spelling, maths, and indeed technology as well. So we're going to hear from Claire Campbell over the next couple of minutes in the video. Thank you. I'm Claire Campbell. Uh, I am the Adult Literacy Organiser here in the Ballymun Adult Read and Write Scheme. We run a gardening class uh, here on Wednesday afternoons. Because this is a literacy service, we will invite students uh, from across our service to join in our gardening class and they work really hands-on. So it's not so much a paper-based course as, as it is a hands-on course where they're learning about planting, when to plant, how to plant, what to plant at the different times of year. Um, they work both inside here in, in this hall area and also out in our courtyard where they have hanging baskets, pots, all kinds of containers that were never intended as uh, plant pots. It, it reached out into little parts of the city who wouldn't normally be involved in the educational aspect as well as to our past students, current students and families and friends of our students. So I suppose it expanded a little bit outside our usual small bubble, but also we were able to advertise other events that were happening across the city. People were able to attend Zoom events that they wouldn't have been able to attend here on site. So I suppose Zoom has reached out across the city as well and made courses more accessible to all students. Although there's similar services across the city, not just in the ETB, but across the many services, it's really, really lovely to know what's going on in different areas. It's inspiring to, to hear of courses that are successful and that are working in other areas, but also for ideas. Um, when you see the Dublin City Learning Festival and what's happening in it, there's, there's courses or programmes or one-off workshops that actually our students here in Ballymun would love to be part of or love to include here in our programme. So being part of the Dublin City Learning Festival is, you know, it's, it's, it's 
it's just a great opportunity to, to reach out across the city um, and be part of the city and not just our own little bubble here in Ballymun. Thank you very much indeed to um, Dublin City uh, Learning Festival and especially to Claire Campbell, the adult literacy organizer. Um, an inspiring thing because, you know, it doesn't have to be uh, very high order things that people get involved in. Part of the camaraderie and learning that goes on uh, can happen at the, level, the simply beautiful level of creating something like um, uh, beautifying your area with new, new planting and new flowers. I'm reminded of the wildflower alleys that have been uh, springing up in Belfast's um, alleyways, um, led, led by the citizens living in the houses that back onto those alleys. So it's a lovely, lovely thing that's being done there. Um, I'm, we're going to move on now to Limerick, and I'm going to introduce you to Yvonne Lane. Yvonne is the Learning Festival Coordinator for Limerick Learning City, and she's going to be talking about network meetings, engaging with stakeholders when planning a learning festival. And you're very welcome, Yvonne, and I'll hand over to you now. Thank you very much, Michelle, for the warm welcome uh, this morning and good evening as well to our international um, guests this morning. And thanks, Emer, for uh, sharing the slide there for me. Um, I suppose today we, we thought of, we all approach organising our various festivals differently and uniquely in each of the five cities. So I thought the way we hold networking meetings with our Lifelong Learning Festival event hosts is a little bit different in Limerick and hopefully you can pick up some ideas of maybe what you might like to do if you're why planning a Lifelong Learning Festival. If you could move on to the next slide please, Emer. Just to mention to you to do a little bit of formal uh, early promo on our next festival in 2023, it will be held from the 27th of March to the 2nd of April next year. And if we could move the slide on there. And just what I'm going to give you a, a couple of minutes um, information about now is how we run our networking events. Basically, these are events that we hold at least twice a year with all of the event hosts that are involved in the Limerick Festival. So our festivals typically have are up to 200 events in them over the, over the week. But we have found that it is very useful to put out an open call to the, all of those event hosts to get together on a twice yearly basis. And what happens at these meetings? It's an opportunity to network, share ideas for events, and perhaps partner and co-host events with other sectors. Indeed, it's that informal networking and the important conversations that take place over the coffee break, et cetera, and the World Cafe style of group work that really our event hosts are coming for. They want to make connections connections, see what other people are organizing or planning for the festival and see if like that there are links and people could partner with other sectors um, and maybe work, work and partner with them on initiatives outside of the festival indeed as well on a year round basis. And the whole goal is to make our, the online, in person and hybrid events a success. So you see that the presenter is talking about do's and don'ts of running hybrid events actually. That was uh, our last networking session there that we held in, in March in the Castle Troy Park Hotel. If you'd like to move on the slide there for me, please, Emer. So what did we do then during the two years that we had to move online and we ran 100% fully virtual festivals in Limerick? We still continued to run our networking events with all of our Lifelong Learning Festival event hosts. We just had to run them online. It wasn't as good, of course, as meeting in person, but we held a variety of networking meetings and training events, particularly when people were new to running online events in 2020. We actually held events with a trainer that we contracted in I suppose best practice and ideas for running interactive and online events. So just to give you an idea as well of what takes place at the networking events. Um, one that we held recently on the 29th of September in celebration of Irish Learning Cities Day um, in the South Hill Hub, uh, South Hill community here in Limerick, we actually included presentations from myself, from the chairperson, and we actually had a table quiz on what all you know about Limerick. So that was a good bit of fun. And did people remember, one of the questions was, did people remember when the first festival was ran for, for Limerick in 2011? And there was spot prizes there for the table quiz winner 
speakers and the most importantly then the world cafe style group work discussion because as i mentioned it's that networking that people come to to, to do really if you want to flick up the next slide there for me um Emerge. I just wanted to give an idea for people to what kind of things the event host might be talking about in the small group work, the World Cafe group discussions. We had done an evaluation of our 2022 festival and some questions came up during it, or I suppose points for improvement. And so we put it out to the group work then when, we, when they ran their World Cafe style discussions. How could we encourage more interactive events in the festival, more events for school aged children, more partnering with the county and it's lovely to see how Derry and Straban partner with the rural communities there in, 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 in for, for Derry's festival. Ideas for our, our theme, our festival theme for next year. So I suppose in the World Cafe style and the groups change for each question, you move on and you get to meet new people in your next group, for example, each, each 10 or 15 minutes. And that's what the event hosts really like about the networking meetings. It's that chance to discuss and all the while having that idea and eye to partnering with other event hosts on running festival events. If you want to put up the last slide there for me, Emer, thank you very much. Um, we hold events in both the hotel and community venues. I think I've mentioned that. Actually, that wasn't the last slide. It's the next slide that's the last slide. So that was us in, in South Hill Hope. And here is a lovely picture, just another thing that took place at our recent uh, networking meeting on Irish Learning Cities Day, is we launched our lovely Learning Ambassadors booklet. The Learning Ambassadors help us promote the whole concept of lifelong learning and they're passionate about Limerick being a UNESCO learning city. So they had a profile of each of the ambassadors in our learning ambassadors booklet and we launched it there that day during our networking event as well. And that's me, I think, and I hope I've given you some ideas um, for, for networking with your event host for your lifelong learning festival. Thank you very much, Michelle. Thanks, Yvonne. Thank you. Um, Thanks, Gareth. So uh, that, that was our speakers and selection of videos. Um, you know, obviously today's session is about, you know, why hold a learning festival? And hopefully you've seen through the, the, the various speakers and videos about um, the benefits of having that learning festival, you know, shining a spotlight on all the great work that's done. Um, being a learning city, uh, we want to break down those barriers to learning. We want to be, be um, provide those opportunities uh, for learning. And a learning festival is a great way to do that. Um, to show the type of work that's been going on in the cities, in the regions, and indeed rural as well. Um, you know, maybe people use that as an excuse to, you know, turn up, go, um, attend that workshop um, because they're seeing it advertised and promoted throughout the the region. Uh, what we've also seen as well, you know, Yvonne mentioned there about, um, you know, having to go online during the, the, the COVID. And yes, it brought a lot of challenges, but it also brought a lot of opportunities. You know, moving to a hybrid approach, does open up um, uh, the ability for people to to use that Zoom if they can't travel to those destinations or those those particular regions to really take part in what's happening. So the great opportunities there, and you know, we want to make the learning opportunities as inclusive as um, possible for all our learners throughout the cities and regions. So. Um, really appreciate you you spending um, this evening or the, this morning and we wanted to open up the next 10 or 15 minutes or so to any questions that you may have. Um, I do know that unfortunately the chat functionality isn't working so if anyone would like to um, please um, raise their hand, take themselves on mute and ask questions. We've got learning coordinators on the call um, from the Irish Network. We've got obviously our speakers as well. Um, lots of people that will hopefully answer any questions that you may have about anything that you've heard today or anything else you'd want to know about. Who's yeah, going to be just, first? Just yes. while um, I see two hands up, but can I just add to what you said by by saying how impressed I am with the energy of, of learning cities. Um, it's very hard to sustain it, especially during the times of COVID and the innovative ways in which learning cities made sure that things still happened and that they didn't drop out of sight might be something people might like to comment on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fantastic, Michelle. Thank you. Um, I see Diane, you have your hand up there. Yeah, thank you. Um, look, a big thank you to, to all the presentations. Really, um, really inspiring and, and yeah, very impressed with the, the really close 
network that you have all created and the collaborations and um, yeah, re really, really impressive. Um, I, I wanted to ask, or oh, just pick up on um, Yvonne's, um, the festival networking events that, that you've run. Um, I really love those ideas, that, that idea of um, bringing people in and talking about, you know, sharing ideas and um, sort of trying to inspire some collaborations. Do you have any, um, maybe could you talk a little bit more about the, you know, was it difficult to get the people in the room or, you know, did you need particular enticements or, um, yeah. Yeah. Thanks, um, Diane. No, we didn't. We had we had in the Casa Troy Park Hotel last March. We had over fifty people, and I think we had over forty in South Hill Hub on the 29th of September. Um, I think people, it, it's. It, I know as we emerged from COVID, they just actually were crying out for sitting mm. down, meeting, and having a chat over coffee. And if they didn't do anything else, if they just met and networked, but it's those collaborations that uh, people. You know are making links that sometimes it's even outside of the festival that they'll work together do you know um yes. we had a lovely example of um midwest aries mental health services partnering with the hunt museum for example and they ended up running a panel discussion on art and creativity and well-being and they just spent the morning chatting away between themselves you know what i mean organizing this and and and, and networking um so we didn't have any particular enticements, just I suppose the nice the nice scones, etc. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks thanks for the idea. I think uh, yeah, we we'll, we'll, we might um, experiment with that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, thanks for your question, uh, Madeline. You have a question there. Yes, thank you. Um, I had forgotten that we did networking events you know, pre-COVID. So thank you for the, the reminder. Um, I have a question to Norma, um, and that's about the Sustainable Practices Trail, which I love the idea. And I was just wondering if I can get more information, if you can tell us a little bit more about the, besides the bees and the, the florist, um, or is there a list on your website, things like that? Yeah, um, well, we, um, we we did visit um, a number of, of other organisations as well. Um, and what I could do is I could always maybe um, send on some details about it. And actually the, the run or the, the trail was recreated as part of Irish Learning Cities Day this year as well. And there is, I think there's an article, maybe, I don't know if Sha um, Siobhan might be able to, to send that on. There, I think there's an article about um, one of the, the trails that was run. So, um, you know, I think it's 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 a great trail because it's, it's quite, you know it's easy to facilitate and um and people were really interested in being involved from the various organizations and i think that like the, t the trail was about an hour and a half but you could run it for about five hours because there's so much stuff in the community that um you know to, to show about their sustainable practices so um so but i could i could send you on some some information anyway definitely so um that's it yeah thanks great and, and also great we had a network on this meeting as well. Fantastic. Um, sharing those best practices, sharing those ideas. Uh, Michelle Murphy, you have a question as well? Yes, I do. Is my microphone on? Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I have a question. I just wanted to say about Jared and Leanne's from Belfast. What a wonderful pres what a wonderful presentation and a great talk, Jared, from yourself. Really inspiring and really difficult learning barriers to overcome. So I can't tell you how we tear in my eye when you were talking there. It was fantastic. But a question to both of you, and really it's about What's your next step and kind of tell the citizens of Belfast, you know, to, on how to understand people with learning disabilities and what kind of barriers? What's that next step? Because I think that's really important. Over the last few months, we've been having conversations with our local learning disability people too as well. And sometimes your organisations know all know all the things about it, but sometimes the organisations outside don't know, like businesses and even people like us that work on councils sometimes don't know the right terminology or don't know the best things to kind of bring people in and involved. So what kind of things do you do or what's your next steps in, kind of, in getting that, moving that forward? Well, my next step is to uh, inform the Belfast City Council that we as disabled people, we have rights and we can't speak out to, to achieve those rights, and one of those rights is learning and the ability to learn. 
and to get equal opportunities for both uh, organizers and teachers to to be tolerant of our disabilities and to work with us so is that the it can't be brushed under the carpet or ignored and just to just to, to be open and be tolerant with disabled people with learning you know, and it's it's so simple, isn't it? But it's right just to be open and honest and treat and treat us equally like everybody else. Really fantastic, brilliant. If I was just coming there, Michelle, really, we sit in a lot of different panels within, you know, the city of Belfast. So we do sit in Belfast City Council panel and other organisations have actually came to us and asked us, such as the Grand Opera House. Um, we were very much involved in the whole reform of it um, because there wasn't enough accessibility and there wasn't enough consideration. So the Speak Out group were very much um, in most them there to kind of come in and you know give their views of what needs to be in place and yes now it's more accessible um, if anyone has been to the new Grand Opera House it's a very accessible building um, and it takes into consideration all disabilities. Um, we're very much about empowering the you know working with people to empower themselves or to speak out for themselves and a lot of our guys will come to us with very little confidence and we're very much about saying, well, it's OK not to know everything about yourself either. But what we want to do is for you to become confident, to let other people, you know, work with you. And that's where we would have our peer advocacy, our advocates um, are, you know, are themselves stands up for themselves whenever confidence is put in place or just even knowing, you know, we have a lot of people who come to us and receive a lot of information. Um, say through the post, through letters, and they have a lot of literacy issues and they don't understand the terminologies. And just by explaining just something simple of a one word, they can grasp that themselves and they can, they're can they fully able to deal with the situation. Um, we are also looking at our capacity and consent workshop, and that would be what we would be hoping to be hosting this year um, within the festival learning. And that's very much about telling people of, you know, you do have rights, looking at even the acts um, or the orders, um, around the mental health or around disability rights or human rights in a very understandable manner, do you know. So it's taken away sometimes those barriers that are put in place and whether that be, you know, the terminologies or whether that be um, accessibility. And it's about us then implementing those to encourage people then to stand up for their own rights. Yeah, it's really it's really important that they can do it for themselves, isn't that right? So thank you. Yes. Thank you both. Really inspirational. Just fantastic. Delighted you were here this morning. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jared. Thanks, Leanne. And thanks for your question, uh, Michelle. Um, Joanne, you, you have your hand up as well. Absolutely. Thanks a million, Gareth. Um, I, I suppose I do have a question, but it's probably more just um, a note of thanks for the invite to participate in this today. Um, we had just a by way of introduction, I suppose my name is Joanne Kilmartin and I work in the Atlantic Technological University in Letterkenny. Um, so I have just recently joined the team here and was fortunate enough to connect with Michelle a couple of weeks ago and have a meeting with her to learn about this initiative. I'm employed to work on the Northwest Tertiary Education Cluster, so to work cross-border to develop pathways for students. So this certainly aligns. We had a very exciting conversation with Michelle, myself and my colleague in the ETB. So I really just wanted to say hi to introduce myself and explain why I'm sitting here amongst all of you today as we're not currently part of the, the Learning Cities Network. But as I said, it's something that very much aligns to the objectives on the project that I'm that I'm working on. And I'm just delighted to have heard all of the inspirational speakers this morning. Um, I suppose really for me, you know, it's it's what really is resonating is that lifelong learning. So it's about bringing everybody in. And my question is probably for everyone, really, it's in terms of where do you start? Do you start small with a cohort and build out from that? Or do you go big and try and get everybody in and, and see where you end up? So it's just I was just keen to to know that, Gareth. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Joanne. Um... I put my hand up there to answer. Yeah, I put my hand up there. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, lovely to meet you, Joanne. And um, uh, I am the coordinator of the Lifelong Learning Festival in Cork. And I suppose in answer to your question, um, my colleague Dennis Barrett, who, ca who can't be here, who's the coordinator of the, uh, the Learning City Project in Cork, he always says, work with the willing. You know, so if you can find those who 
already understand the value of learning and the and the joy and the power of lifelong learning if you can engage with those people and help them to spread everybody comes at it from a different angle i know i feel uh, working through the festival so inspired by the fact that something that's fun and free really has the capacity and the potential to change people's lives you know people who may have turned away from uh their learning journeys maybe had a poor experience either at primary or secondary level, decided not to continue. Um, as Leanne was saying earlier on there, sometimes just a tiny little thing, learning learning how the meaning of one word can 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 op- turn a key in the door, you know. And uh, I think if people can re-engage through festivals, through open events, through uh, free free events, uh, then there's the potentiality for them to change their lives, you know, to 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 do something really positive for themselves, yeah. for their family, for their community. So that's where I find the inspiration. But anyway, that's what I would say, Joanne, work with the willing. You'll have people who automatically uh, engage with you, who understand it, who get where you're yeah. coming from. It's a very simple concept, lifelong learning. Uh, sometimes I think we overcomplicate it a wee bit, but uh, yeah. I think just to the curiosity that lives within us all to know if we can yeah. keep nurturing that. So, yeah. Siobhan, Siobhan, thank you for that. I think that's a, that's a lovely takeaway actually from this morning is, is work with the willing. And I think you're right, because for me, it's it's very much about that upskilling and reskilling of people that may have, yeah. you know, got to a certain point or, as you said, had difficulties early on in the education system and, and had a negative experience. So, um, so yeah, that's thank you yeah. for sharing that. You're welcome. Thank you. And we're seeing lots of um, activity in the area of recognition of prior learning. And it's probably the same for you in Donegal as well uh, in, in the university there. Um, do you know, and that just that lifts my spirit, really, do you know, that that no matter where or how we've all learned loads. And if we keep doing it, sure, we'll all be we'll all be on the right path. Thanks. Thanks, Yvonne. Um... I know Yvonne, you'd mentioned also about themes, having those themes in terms of learnings and uh, it really supports that. Michelle, I think you're going to come in as well with some comments yeah, I just, on that. Yeah, I just wanted to say, I mean, Siobhan is right, we tend to work with the and but I'm hoping now over the next six or seven months as part of our shared island, Joanne, you can join us at one of our exchange consultations, either in Belfast and Dublin and Derry or in uh, Limerick. It would be absolutely fantastic. So you and I'll have a chat about that and see if we can make more connections and talk about making our region a Northwest learning region, not just a Derry and Strabane region for sure. So thanks a million for coming today. It's been really great. Thanks for that, Michelle. I look forward to it. Um, before I pass over to Michelle Markin for a summary, any other questions from anyone or comments? No. OK, um, before I hand over, I really appreciate your, your, your time and, and indeed your questions uh, as well. Some some great comments and questions there. So, Michelle, I'll pass it back to you to do a summary and wrap up. Thanks very much indeed, Gareth. Um, you know, there's 23 people have attended this seminar this morning. But but the 23 people who have attended are key people. They're they're they're, they're people representing all the areas we work in. And it's it, when the question was asked, I think by Diane about where do you begin? Well, some learning organ, uh, you know, learning studies have begun from the bottom up, and some have begun from the top down, and some are meeting everybody halfway. And it's it's lovely, for example, Joanne, to see you from the newest. Are you the newest university in Ireland? Yeah, yeah. Big clap for that. And it's, it's lovely. One of them. It, and it's not only that, but it's lovely to see that right at the start. A university like yours is committing to to the learning cities and the essential nature of what they can provide. So uh, welcome, welcome. Um, so I suppose in summary, some of the, the key things I've noticed uh, today. Um, well, obviously we are all agreed about the vital nature of lifelong learning. That that's our common language, isn't it? Lifelong learning, and we know that um, if we embrace it, that that gives us our uh, contribution to our healthy cities and the hinterlands, because it must be stressed that a city doesn't exist on its own. It's we, we describe cities as inner city, outer city, urban, suburban, whatever. So, so we're 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 not leaving anybody out. The key is inclusion. Interestingly, and in some of the videos, um, we, we became aware that 
people understand that you do not have to begin at the highest level in order to embrace um, the, the kind of learning which we want. It's an opportunity also to embrace newcomers to local areas. I think we've all acknowledged that. Um, we strengthen communities with lifelong learning. Being part of the UNESCO Learning Studies Framework strengthens our country. Um, we work from local to national and back again. We create networks. We uh, have stakeholders. And interestingly, you'll notice today the vocabulary that we all commonly understand, which, which we've taken for ourselves, um, words which exist in other arenas, but for us as learning cities, um, create, if you like, a, a, a dictionary of what we want for, for our lifelong learning endeavors. So uh, at, at this point, I should just maybe add a personal note in, in that I've been delighted to be asked to co-chair today um, from the Belfast end. I, I, I have, it's a passion, the understanding that everybody has in our learning cities networks that learning can begin with anything that a person does, which is perhaps new to them or unsure for them or develops them or extends their interests in life itself. And it helps so much to make us stronger and healthier. Um, so th those are, I hope, some of the, the summary uh, things that I am taking from our seminar today. And it, it just falls to me now to thank all of our participants, all of our Learning City coordinators, everybody who has worked so hard with the technology to get us here today, the lovely Baccarat Irish Network of Learning Studies for most of us, not for me because I, I'm just a little bit slower to learn that, but um, it has been wonderful. And what strikes me is the camaraderie of everybody involved with Learning Studies. You know something? There's no ego involved. Everybody has a central focus, which is to give a chance for a better life to everybody in our cities and our communities. Um, each individual here knows the work they've done to contribute to today. Amazing work done by everybody. Inevitably, if I was to start naming names, you know what will happen. I will leave somebody out of the list. I did start a list, colleagues. Yes, and I thought, no, I'm not going to go there. So um, from my point of view, amazingly, we are on time. 11.55. We're exactly on time. So I, I will just say, I see a hand up here. From Madeline, I don't know if Madeline, you want to come back in here. Please feel free to do so uh, if you want to. I, I do apologize for last minute, but okay. two things. I just want to do a shout out to Diane and her team working on the Global Learning Festival, um, which is tremendous. But secondly, I'm totally exhausted. We we had our Lowell Learning Center uh, Festival in October. I've been involved in the global one this week. We're doing a big celebration tomorrow. And I just can't believe that now I'm inspired so much by these presentations, even in my state of like, I'm done, you know. So thank you very much. <laughs> or no thank you. I'm not sure which one, but um, thanks so much. Uh Madeline, that, that's, that's lovely to hear. You know, the fact of the matter is that being here with us today in this seminar represents the best of what we are trying to do in Ireland, uh, in both uh, the north of Ireland and, and in Ireland. We're, we're trying to reach out. We have no barriers. We don't know about barriers. We don't want barriers. And you're, you're part of our network now, and it's wonderful. Thank you very much indeed. Um, I'll just check if there's anybody else who, who has anything they want to come in with. If not, um, do you reckon that there's, that's us done, Gareth? What do you think? Can we say thank you very much to everybody for participating now? Yeah, I think I think Diane just hands us one up there. Oh, um, so it did. Yes. Michelle, yeah. Good on you, Diane. Yes. Go for it. Yes, just just quickly. Um, and yeah, thank you for the, the shout out, Madeline. And, and I just wanted to thank, um, the Irish Network for such a great event as part of the Global Learning Festival. Um, but also a slight correction in the introduction, um, I think the Global Learning Festival was referred to as being hosted by Wyndham. We, we collaborate, we co-host with our neighbours, Melton, um, Melton Council, and also our 
um, community of, of learning cities and learning communities a around the globe. So we certainly can't take credit for it. Um, and y yes, it's it's networks like this and, and uh, people like Madeline and, and uh, everyone else here that uh, have contributed to such a great festival this year. So thank you. Thanks thank for the correction, much. Diane. Sorry, my mistake. It's okay. Um, Yvonne, do you want to come back in there? You've got a minute. Oh yeah, I just just very quickly. Um, yes, I echo the thanks, and it's lovely to be part of the Global Learning Festival. But a special thanks from all of us in the INLC, the Irish Network of Learning Cities, to you, Michelle, and to Gareth th this morning and th this evening for chairing our event and wonderful chairing. Thanks, Michelle and Gareth. Well, a bit confusing Thank with you. two Michelles, um, but I, I think I think Gareth will, will offer his, his own comments here. I thank you. It's just wonderful to be part of it today. It's exciting. It's it's life um, energizing for me, and I'm sure for everybody else involved. Gareth? Yeah, you know, Madeline made the comment there, you know, these type of things. Uh, I know becoming chairs has certainly been a personal growth for me, and these type of events give you give you that energy, you know, on a Wednesday afternoon for us now, and, you know, um, I might not I might not need to go down from a caramel square <laughs> at this stage, but um, I still will. But yeah, it gives us, us energy and to see everyone's passion and to, to see and hear all the experiences that people are having and the, the things they're doing either through the festivals that are run or throughout the year. It, um, yeah, it, it uh, definitely makes us uh, even more passionate about learning and supporting these mm -hmm. great networks. So it just remains for me then um, to add a good wish to everybody for the endeavors um, for their learning festivals coming up. Um, and there is a wonderful uh, cross fertilization of people crisscrossing Ireland to visit each other's uh, uh, home cities to experience what's being done. Long may that continue. Uh, so go and have a good day. And thank you all very much indeed for being on this seminar today. Well done.